to my mom. She wrote a lot of stuff and um, highlighted a bunch of stuff. And like in the back, she actually has the day that I became a Christian. She um, had acute myeloid leukemia, which is a uh, cancer of the blood. So it basically like poisons your whole body. Um, she got it when I was four and she had it for four years. She got it the first time and then uh, she came to Shane's Hospital up here in Gainesville. I'm from West Palm. And she had it for about two to three months and then went into remission. The chemo would work. And then she, would, she got it three more times and every time it kind of came back worse. Um, she went through chemotherapy and had, you know, every single side effect plus more that they thought she would have. Uh, you know, lost her hair, would, um, she was in a coma for two months at one time. Um, she would, you know, have a fever, she'd like be freezing, just throwing up all the time, couldn't talk, she had to re like relearn how to talk and eat. Um, she had a lot of seizures, just constantly sick, like through the chemo. And then she would get better and then get worse again until eventually she passed away of it after four years when I was eight. Three months after my mom passed away, um, I was at church on a Wednesday night. We had, you know, kids Bible study and then we had choir and stuff after. And I was dropping one of my friend's um, brothers off at the nursery and the way our church is, is the main entrance to the sanctuary is like on a street. And it was really late at night, no one was really around. So I dropped him off and a guy just kind of grabbed me from behind. Um, he pulled me to where no one could see me and molested me. It was actually kind of funny because um, after it happened, like years later, I didn't really like think about it any, like anymore. And um, my dad was just reading the newspaper and like saw this, that he had shot his ex-girlfriend's like boyfriend and so we found it and now it's online so hey it's good to be able to <laughs> but there's a whole thing about it that you can read about <laughs> that he's in jail now so it's that's good that he has what he deserved Won't you stay with me? i was a sophomore in high school um, my dad woke up in the middle of the night and just came into my room and started, he just said we need to go to the hospital. And um, my sister called the ambulance to come get him. So the ambulance came, they told him he was having a severe heart attack. And I just remember hearing them say, you know, like code blue or code red, whatever it's the worst because they, they thought they had lost him. My sister and I were kind of just holding each other and we were just praying and I was just bawling my eyes out. And just saying, like, this can't happen because he's, you know, my best friend. He's kind of all I have left. Um, so it was definitely the hardest thing that I've probably been through yet. Won't you stay with me? My, my dad's almost 70. He'll be 70 in January, so he's pretty old. And um, I definitely, I know that, you know, sooner than later he will pass on because he's getting older hopefully not for a very long time but I just really you know every time I see him I really like try to you know how do I say it like pack in all the memories I can just because I know that relationships don't last forever and people don't last forever and we really have to be thankful for the time we have with our friends and family oh gosh would I be a great burlesque dancer because you just gotta be like That'd be awful. I just, I love kids and I love music and I love helping people. When I see people in pain because I've been through a lot of pain, I just want to help them. That's like when I'm, when I see like my friends and family, you know, when they've gone through something, that's what really like kills me inside and it makes me really sad because I know how hard or how much it hurts. Ashton is one of those friends that you will only meet in once in your lifetime. And she is there at the drop of a hat if you need her. I love children, and I'm with children, and teaching them, and, and just seeing like little two-year-old kids that I have in my classes that they've already like lost a parent. It's just so sad knowing that they'll never grow up with a, with a mom or dad kind of like I was. Um, so I just want to like be around people like that and help them. That's kind of like what I think my life is for.